Howdy! My name is Lisa Snyder and I'm the author of Photoshop CS5 The Missing Manual and co-author of iPhoto 11 The Missing Manual. I'm also the chief evangelist of iStockphoto.com, the world's most fabulous royalty-free image, illustration, video, and audio resource. I hope you enjoy the following step-by-step -step tip. Howdy! Welcome to Editing Habits to Break Part 2. Last time, we learned that any time you're tempted to create an empty image layer and fill it with pixels, that you might use a solid color adjustment layer instead. And we also learned that any time you're tempted to duplicate an image layer and run a filter on the duplicate layer, that you might use smart filters instead because you get that great automatic layer mask. So in this video, I want to share with you a couple of more editing habits to break. And we'll start out with the first one which is if you're tempted to duplicate an image layer and then change its blend mode to either uh, darken or multiply to darken the image or screen or lighten to lighten the image use an empty adjustment layer instead so let me show you the old way of doing it which actually has several steps so let's say that we want to darken this uh, pretty cowgirl's hat and then we want to lighten her eyes well, the old way of doing this quickly, without getting into curves or levels or anything like that, would be to duplicate the image layer by pressing Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. Then you would trot up to the Blend Mode pop-up menu at the top of the Layers panel, and you would choose either Darken or Multiply to uh, darken the image. So I'm going to choose Multiply. And now the whole image is too dark, so typically you would add a layer mask to hide the darkening from areas of the image that don't need to be darkened. So let's just do that as well. Trot on down to the bottom of the layers panel and click the circle within a square icon. And now anytime you're dealing with the layer mask, you all, all know that painting with black conceals and white reveals. So if I want to hide part of the darkening, I would grab my brush tool by pressing B. I take a peek at my color chips at the bottom of my tools panel, these guys down here. Make sure black is on top. If it's not, you can click that little curvy arrow to flip-flop your color chips, or you can press the X key, which flip-flops black to white. So if you've got black as your foreground color chip, which means you will soon be painting with it, you can mouse over to your image, and I'm going to increase my brush size by pressing the right bracket key. You could quickly paint the areas that you don't want darkened. So we'll just say that we only want her hat area darkened. And I'll show you a quick before and after by toggling the layer visibility off and on. So there's our before, there's our after. Okay, so that's the way we used to do it. This is the way we used to also lighten image. So we would go back to the original image, duplicate it. This time we would change its blend mode to something in the lighten category, such as screen. And what we're going to do here is we're going to lighten just the iris of her eyes to make them really pop. So go ahead and choose screen. The whole image gets way too light, so again, you would have to add a layer mask by clicking the circle within a square icon at the bottom of the layers panel. This time we want to hide more than we want to reveal, so I'm going to quickly fill my mask with color by pressing Option Delete or Alt Backspace on a PC, and that will use your foreground color, which is black, and it will fill the mask with that, so it effectively hides the lightning that you've done. And then if we wanted to reveal the lightning only on her eyes, I'd press my left bracket key to go down and brush size, flip-flop my color chips by pressing X so that white is now my foreground color chip, and I would reveal the lightning only on her eyes. And you could also do it on the whites as well. That's a great uh, eye lightning trick. You just don't want to paint over the pupil. Okay, so <laughs> she's looking a little vampirish. You didn't know you were going to get taught how to <laughs> creative vampire did you all the rage these days so this is obviously overdone so I'm gonna lower the opacity so that it doesn't look quite so otherworldly so to do a little selective lightening and darkening in your image you'd end up with two image layers well the only problem with that is it's not very efficient there's a better way to do it now and that way is to use empty adjustment layers because you won't bloat the file size of your document quite so much because adjustment layers don't take up any space, file size speaking. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two layers by shift clicking them and then if you've got CS4 or CS5 you can simply press the delete key. So this is the new way to do the technique I just told you about. Creating an empty adjustment layer. What you can do is you can click the half black half white circle at the bottom of your layers panel and you want to choose levels and the only reason you're choosing levels is it's the first one in this particular list that doesn't actually do anything to your image unless you go tweak in the sliders which we're not going to so we're just gonna go uh, choose levels and I'm gonna immediately 
collapse my adjustments panel. So now we have an adjustment layer. And look what comes along with every adjustment layer, a layer mask. So you're not going to have to add one to hide either the lightening or darkening from your image. So, so efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode of this adjustment layer to multiply. We're going to do exactly what we did before. Already got a layer mask. I don't have to go make one. Press B to grab my brush tool. Uh, I'm gonna, I need to paint with black because I want to conceal or hide part of this darkening. So I'm going to press X to flip flop my color chips. Mouse over to my image. Use my right bracket key to make my brush pretty big. And just paint over the areas that you don't wish to be dark. So now we've done that. So now let's add another empty adjustment layer. I'm going to expand my color panel here so you can actually see my level adjustment layer when I choose it. Otherwise, it falls outside of the recording area of the screen and you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose levels again because that's the first one in this list that doesn't do anything to your image. Now I'm going to go ahead and collapse my adjustment panel again. So this time I want to change the layer blend mode to screen because we want to lighten the iris of her eyes. And remember last time we had to add the layer mask. Well, we don't have to do that because we've already got one here. I am going to go ahead and fill the layer mask with black because I only want the lightning to be revealed on the iris of her eyes. So it's a little bit faster this way. So with black as my foreground color chip, I'm going to press Option Delete on a Mac or Alt Backspace on a PC to fill my layer mask with black, effectively hiding the effect. And then I'm going to mouse over to the iris of her eyes Use the left bracket key to go down and brush size. I want to reveal this lightning on her eyes. So black conceals, white reveals means I need to paint with white. So I need white as my foreground color chip. So you can just press the X key to flip flop your color chips like that. And then I'm going to quickly paint the iris and the whites of her eyes. Yes, she's like vampire girl again. And then we can mouse over to the layers panel and just lower the opacity of her eyes so it doesn't look quite so freaky. So here's our before and after of our eye lightening and the before and after of our darkening. So as you can see, I got a little bit of a cleaner layers panel using adjustment layers instead of duplicating your image layer keeps your Photoshop document file size nice and slim and trim. So that's editing habit number three to break. I'm going to share one more quick one with you before I say goodbye. And that is tip number four or habit to break number four. Never, ever, ever let Photoshop desaturate your image for you. And by desaturate, I mean remove all the color or create a grayscale out of your document. Case in point, here's our original. Here's what Photoshop would create if you ask it to desaturate and a lot of beginners especially will use the desaturate command to create black and whites and it's just you've got no control over the level of contrast or anything in Photoshop you know does an okay job but if it is just okay it's not spectacular in any you know means of the word so to do that what you would do is go to the image menu choose adjustments and desaturate and you will, of course, get this very uninspiring grayscale version of your image, which is this. Well, now let me show you what you can create if you were to use a gradient map adjustment layer, which is one of my favorite ways to create a grayscale image, or a black and white adjustment layer is also a good option. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on a duplicate layer that I made. And here's what you can create with a gradient map adjustment layer. So again, there's Photoshop's version of black and white. Here's what you can create by using Grady Map Adjustment Layer. And it just so happens that I recorded a video tutorial called Great Grayscales. It was posted back in May and it covers exactly how to create a black and white adjustment layer and a gradient map adjustment layers so that you don't ever have to rely on Photoshop's desaturate command again. So that's it for now. You've learned four editing habits to break over part one and part two of these videos. And I'll see y'all back here real soon. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll check out my full video workshops on creativelive.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter or on Facebook. In fact, if you click like on my Facebook fan page, you can get a free two-page cheat sheet each for Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and iPhoto.
And if you'd like to grab 10 free high resolution images from iStock Photo, plus receive a discount of 20% on your first purchase of 50 or more credits, then you can visit my landing page at iStockPhoto.com slash Lisa Snyder. Until next time, may the creative force be with you.